Hi everyone and welcome to the Why God uh, blog here, the video blog called Why God Wants You to Know That You Were Made For More. So I've been having a lot of emails and a lot of people trying to ask me what like what am I really what do you mean I'm made for more like what is this really this Christianity thing really all about why should I buy into it why should I be into it and it's like okay let me just like sit you down and just talk for a second what is Christianity like so you can also link into the blog itself if you prefer this written down and not to have all of this and the the audio and the video and such but if you want to know what Christianity is like watch this video or read the blog that goes along with this video so have you ever had an illusion, an ideal that you hoped, that you hoped beyond reason was true? You know, those desperate attempts, those lengths that you would go to to make it true. Would you follow that trail? Would you go to the brink of reality and leap over the edge if you knew that you could find it there? Okay, that's what Christianity is like. Why do girls want to be princesses? Why have movies? Why are there movies with these secret desires that some long lost relative is gonna come and is going to announce that you are the royal heir to the throne? Well, is it just because, is it just because we wanna be chosen? Um, is it just because we want to be special? Okay, why do men surge for power, for recognition? Is it just because they want approval? Why has humanity throughout centuries done whatever it takes to rule? Is it just because they want power, dominion, or is it because these desires, these ideals, are what we've always been destined for? Okay, these aren't abstract concepts uh, conjured up by abstract people. These are your desires. These are your dreams. Why would a God create us to have such futile dreams and desires? Why would he have us stand at the edge of a cliff, survey that sun setting over the, a vast ocean, and have this, why would he place that feeling in our hearts, that desire to see what lies beyond? But that's because he made you. That's why he made you. That is what he made you for. So who wants to be the best at something? Like anything? All right, well, you already are the best. So you already are the best. All right, because you are known in Genesis, you are the masterpiece of the known universe. Like, do you understand you are God's masterpiece of the known universe? Uh, you are his culminating project. You are the je sais quoi, the final flourishing touch upon the universe. So who wants to be in charge? Well, you, you already are, okay? So God made you literally to rule the universe beside him, along with him, to share in his glory, understand understand the weight of that sentence you were made to share in his glory like girl you are already a princess and not uh, under the sea with sebastian or in this faraway enchanted castle with the beast like you are a princess of the universe and beyond uh, and beyond because god is a creator so this aspect is a part of him it can't be separated from him creators create they continue to create he is still creating he's been creating he wasn't he didn't like rest on the seventh day and he's like well i'm done like he has been continuing to create how much more is out there for us to discover how much more is there out there for us to rule over and have dominion over all right so who wants to be understood and loved for for who they are and what they are now, if you have children, you will understand, but there is no benefit to having kids. There's not. Um, name one. Like, really, please, name one. Uh, also, why do you love your kids? Like, think about it. Hmm. Like, if, oh, because they're, mm, ah, okay. Guess what? If they weren't smart, clever, quick, or funny, you would still love them, right? If they had any other attributes, would, would you love them less? Me thinks no. Um, you would not love them less if they just weren't as quick or as funny or as clever or as beautiful. I'm pretty sure you'd love them the same. All right, what do they bring to the table? N nothing. Um, they take, that's what they do. All right, yet we love them more than anything. And in what other relationship could you possibly accept so little yet give so much? You give everything, but yet 
you do hardly expect anything in return. And you do it willingly. You're not even begrudgingly about it. You do it willingly. All right, no questions, no hesitation. You lay your life down for that little life sucker. All right, our love for them is relational. It is it flows out of our relationship to them, all right? Um, we love them unconditionally. There's nothing that my child could say or do that would make me love them anymore. I told my daughter that once. She's like, what do you mean? So you can't love me more than you do now? I'm like, no, sorry. Mm -mm. Like, there is nothing that you can do to make me love you more. So if you think you're going to win this game or if you're going to have this title or get this job or get this boyfriend or have this kind of prestigious whatever i'm not going to love you more do you understand like i can't love you more on the flip side though i can't love you less i'm not gonna love you less so there's nothing you can do that's going to make me love you less my love is just this constant flow it's like almost from the sun the beams constant flow the sun is still out there shining on you rain or shine it's still out there consistently it's just like you might be in a different position the earth might be in a different position. There might be clouds in the stratosphere that are covering. Uh, there might be some other kind of astronomical event happening where you cannot see the sun as clearly shining upon you, but is the sun still out there objectively shining the same? Yes, yeah, so, so the same with a parent's, a healthy parent's love. It's still out there shining objectively, loving their child the same. Just because the child, they can disappoint us. We will have moments where we're more proud or less proud of them but that doesn't still change the constant flow of our love for them. So in the same way, <laughs> in the same way, believe it or not, God loves you as a father loves his child. So he loves you in the same way. And, and remember, you're his masterpiece. Like he specifically created you and there is no one in the universe in any space or time that is like you. You are, if you're alive, or if you've ever existed, or if you exist at this moment, that means that there is a purpose for you, that no one else in the known universe could ever fulfill the way that you can. Otherwise, why would you be here? Like, why would he make you? Why would you exist if someone on this earth, in all of the existence, you know, past, present, future, could fulfill the same purpose that you will? Somebody's already created that's going to fulfill the same things you are going to supposed to do why would he have you you're not just none of us are just here as ornamental detail just some kind of random fluff that makes things a little bit more interesting no we're all here specifically because no one else is going to do what we're supposed to do individually um so i i want you to realize too like god he would have to recreate the whole world the whole world and all of its inhabitants to create another you as you are right here, right now in this moment. He would literally have to start from the very beginning from scratch and replicate the entire earth and all of its inhabitants and have them interact in the same way throughout all the past so that you are sitting here right now exactly as you are. There is no substitute for you. Like you are more important than, than the earth. You're more important than anything. He could create a whole new earth with all new creatures and put all the humans on it, like that really isn't hard. Can he create another you the way you are right now? Can he really create another you? No, he cannot. And if anyone says like, what about cloning? I think you're missed the purpose. Like think critically and go back to the beginning. Like I said, he would literally have to replicate the entire earth and all of its inhabitants and every single event that's ever happened in order to create exactly what you are right now today. Who you are right now today He'd have to recreate everything in order to get you back if he lost you. All right. So that is how specific you are. Like you're very specific. The whole fingerprint thing. It's really a drop in the drop in the bucket. Like when you when it comes to how specifically made you are, how how meticulously crafted, like curated you are. You're a continually evolving work of art that's sole purpose which we're gonna have a whole other post on this. Whole purpose is to love God and to share in his glory. Which brings my analogy to a point, yeah, I'm getting there. The reason we have children, their purpose is to, to, to love them. Shocker, right? Remember how earlier I said, what's the point? What do they bring to the table, blah, blah, blah. Really, the bottom, bottom line, they're there for us to love them and to share our lives with them. Like, that's it. All right, that's why you're there, because I wanna enjoy the relationship with you. I want to enjoy you, have a relationship with you. I want to share my life with you. That is why we have children. 
And that is why God has created you to love you and to share his life with you.